What's up guys? It's Nara and I'm back today to tell you guys about my new diagnosis. This new diagnosis put me through hell for like eight or nine months, I think. And I got diagnosed with it back in January. It's just been a while since I've had the time to be on here and share my story with you guys and tell you guys what is now added to my lengthy list of diagnoses. So it's been eight months since these health problems started. I haven't had the health problems since it was finally surgically taken care of in January, but a lot of things led up to that surgery. So I wanna explain those and explain how it happened and pretty much how I got misdiagnosed and had a lot of crazy different problems happening at the same time, which made us think it was one diagnosis and then it ended up being another. Also, I would keep in mind throughout this video that again, I have ulcerative colitis, most of you know that. I have inflammatory bowel disease, I also have IBS, and a lot of health problems that I have usually can be somehow tied back to my colitis or somehow correlated with it, not always, but most of the time that does happen. Also, TMI, before you enter this video, I'm gonna be talking about my butthole, pooping, my butt, but crack like all of that stuff so if you are like whoa i don't like that type of health stuff or you don't want to be talking about my butthole or surgery or any of that click out of this video it's definitely not the video for you so back in september i had gotten what felt like a bump around my butt oh around my butthole i'm gonna say butthole um i'd gotten a bump around it it was excruciating i didn't know what it was at first i was like what do i have like a pimple or something down there like that's kind of was my first thought process of what it was i was like you know what it'll probably just go away like kind of like when you else you get like a pimple down there i was like i'll just ignore it it'll go away eventually and it didn't got larger and larger and larger to the point where I had had it for probably a week. Oh, and also the weird thing is a week before I had had tailbone pain, which I've had in the past. I had it in high school and in college, mostly in college though, when I was sitting on the hard wooden seats at school and I went to a chiropractor and it was spinal problems. So I'd gotten this weird tailbone pain again and was like, maybe I'm just sitting for too long. I don't know. But I didn't correlate it immediately to this bump showing up. And so I got this bump and I was like, what the heck? What is it? I couldn't lay down without being in excruciating pain. I couldn't sit up without being in excruciating pain. It was like seven, eight out of 10, was having trouble sleeping at night because the pain was so bad. So I finally messaged and contacted my PCP's office and was like, hey, I need to be seen by someone like now. I have an active infection down there, which also freaks me out because if you let an infection down there kind of get away, it can be very dangerous. There's a lot of bacteria down there. And I just was like, something's going on. I can't sit, I can't lay down. Like. Someone's got to help me. I've done hot, cold, nothing's helping. I just want to add in, I wasn't exactly sure who to see because I thought maybe it was an abscess or a fistula, but I felt like it was going to take me way longer to get into GI than it was to get me into my PCP's office. Usually my PCP's office, if I call them with an immediate issue, they can get me right in. So I kind of held off on going to my GI's office and I decided to go to my PCP's. I ended up seeing a nurse practitioner that day who was probably one of the dumbest, absolute dumbest nurse practitioners that I've ever encountered. And I'm, I'm saying that as in like, not just nurse practitioners to like doctors or like physicians that I've seen. She was one of the dumbest. She invalidated everything, wanted me to go in there, and she wanted to surgically take care of this cyst, abscess, whatever it was. She told me it was a cyst at first. I knew it was an abscess. And she tried to tell me that she could, like, drain it, and I was like, I really don't care for somebody who probably knows nothing about sterile technique in my PCP's office, who I've never seen before, to just go cutting at my butt. And I was like, this is a serious problem. I think it's possibly related to a fistula. That's complete red flags for someone with colitis because that most likely means I'm probably developing Crohn's. I was kind of freaking out. Red flags wanted to see somebody soon and have them take care of it. And I had read online a lot about how when you have abscess and fistulas, they most likely had to be taken care of surgically. So this nurse practitioner, and I don't want to say nurse practitioners are all dumb. I've had a great nurse practitioner as a physician before. Just this specific one had said multiple things and tried to tell me about my colitis. And remember, I've been diagnosed since I was three and it's all I know. She tried to tell me all the classic textbook things about colitis and how I shouldn't be worried and they're not completely related at all. And the abscess is just random. And I pretty much know nothing about what I'm talking about and pretty much 
sat there and was like, well, if you don't want me to take care of it, then just take Tylenol. When you've had colitis for as long as I have, it is very evident when you get certain physicians who does and doesn't know about colitis. They, like this, like I just said, she was trying to tell me about the classic textbook definition and exactly what the textbook says about colitis, which even in my nursing school ex experience, most of the time, it's not right at all. The textbooks that are like, surgery is a definitive cure. Not correct at all. Um, the ones who say that, you know, you can control colitis through diet. Not correct at all. So she, during this visit, had said four or five things that really were huge red flags for me and told me that she knew nothing at all about my colitis and was just trying to, like, seem like she did, but she really had no clue. And that's fine if you've had no experience with patients with colitis. Just be upfront about it and be open about it and just be straight up with me. So after this woman made it very clear to me that she knew nothing about colitis and that she pretty much wanted to either lance in the office or tell me to just pretty much get lost and take Tylenol, I was so infuriated that I was on the verge of tears and straight up looked at her and was like, no, I'm not going to continue to sit within the next week and just wait for this sucker to pop. No. I've already been in agony for the past few days and no one's done anything about it. So I want it taken care of. I want it lanced. I want it drained. And you're going to get me someone who's going to do that because I'm not leaving here without you contacting somebody. I was at my wit's end with what was happening because of how uncomfortable I was. She ended up telling me that she would give me an antibiotic, which is what else I was looking for because obviously if there's an infection, I want that to resolve as well. But the damage done down there with like the tissue has already been done I can't really help that someone else needs to intervene for that which is what I was also very concerned about so she ended up saying you know I'll contact surgical care office and see if they have anything to say she was like just sit tight because I think she could see that I was not having it with her and also this was one of those experiences where I felt like I was not taken seriously until I literally looked at her and was like, I'm not dumb. I'm a literal registered nurse. I know my shit. And then all of a sudden she started taking me seriously. And that also perturbs the hell out of me. So I sat in this office and I waited and she contacted them and she ended up saying, hey, they have a spot for you. Not today, possibly the next day or the day after. I think I was planning on going to work the next day. So she was like, I'll give you the antibiotic, take Tylenol, painkillers, whatever you want and then go and see them, they'll call you. So I left this visit so pissed off at this woman. I ended up, I think that night, I had an appointment the next day to see them. I think actually I canceled work because I just couldn't function. And I had planned to see surgical care the next day and it ended up that the abscess ended up opening and draining, which was great. So then by the time I saw surgical care the next day, they were like, well, we don't really know why it happened. You could have just gotten bacteria, gotten a cut somehow, maybe you wiped too hard. I saw a nurse practitioner there as well as a surgeon. They were like, you're not classic like Crohn's. And I'm like, well, there's a I'm very high risk to develop it at some point. And I was still very concerned about that. And I was looking for them to want to possibly like find out the reasoning behind this and they wanted to do nothing of the diagnosis just of the treating and since it had already opened up they pretty much just did a complete exam and an internal exam a little bit which was really not that big of a deal to me and they said well these aren't the antibiotics that we would have put you on but we're gonna leave you on them and I think she just put me on augmented if I remember correctly and so they were like well we're not gonna switch you now you're already on augmented it opened up and naturally drained itself so just take hot baths and don't even worry about it it's just a random thing it's just a coincidence that you had it and you have IBD don't even worry about it which I was freaking out over it I wanted an MRI and I said from the beginning to all the nurse practitioner the surgical care and then also I had contacted GI and told them about it and GI was also concerned about the MRI, but they, nobody was like, I feel like at this point you just had it, so we'll just, we'll just call it weird. And that we're just, if it happens again, you know, we'll look into it. But at this moment in time, surgical care was like, we only will treat it and it's already been treated. And GI was like, eh, if more stuff happens, I guess we'll look into it. So at this point I had felt like this maybe was just coincidence and maybe it wasn't going to happen again. Maybe I went too hard, I don't know. But I pretty much went on from there thinking that it was not gonna happen again. But oh boy, was I wrong. So a month went by and in September, did I say that originally happened in September? The first one happened in August. The second one happened in September, literally a month after. I get another one in another location, not the same one, very, very close to my butthole. Again, sorry, TMI. 
And same thing had happened. I had had tailbone pain a week before. So I said, forget my PCP's office this time. I contacted GI, let them know what was happening. They said, yes, this is concerning, but you have no other signs of Crohn's right now. So again, we can't really look into that and go see the surgical care. So I had already scheduled a patient um, appointment with surgical care and I went and saw them. And this time around, I still had it when I went to surgical care, so they were able to look at it. They looked, they did a whole nother exam, like they did last time, and I was freaking out at this point, because I'm like, two abscesses within a month, there's definitely an infection that's not resolving. I'm, like, I'm concerned, I think this is Crohn's disease. They once again gave me the antibiotics and said if it doesn't naturally drain or release itself, come back, we'll lance it, no biggie. And again... Everyone told me, oh, it's just coincidence. It's just coincidence. Nothing to be worried about. You don't have Crohn's, you know. It's not that big of a deal. It was just a coincidence that you had two abscesses very close in location to the same month with tailbone pain the week before. It ended up, I think a few days afterwards, it drained itself naturally. And at this point, I was just starting my job. I was very uncomfortable doing, like, training and stuff because I had to sit in the office all day long. But I couldn't really do much anymore and I couldn't tell the surgeon to like take me to surgery or anything and look. So at this point, I just had to let it go and just hope that if I got it again, it was going to naturally drain itself. Fast forward from September to December. I had no problems. Literally thought this was gone, was like maybe it was a coincidence. I don't really know what the problem is and the... Saturday before after Christmas. I ended up getting another one. Once again, separate location. It had worked itself halfway up between my butthole and my tailbone, like the top of my butt cheeks, and it was halfway in between that. And I was, once again, extremely uncomfortable. At this point, I went into the doctor's office and they were willing to drain it there themselves. They said, again, we don't really know what's causing this. GI at this point was freaking out and was like, no, we do think you have Crohn's disease. We would like to do the MRI. Finally, after I'd been pushing and pushing and pushing for this MRI, they finally said, that's reasonable. We can do it. We'll do it for you. Just make sure that clearly something's still brewing down there infection-wise, and we want to make sure that it's completely gone. So I went into the surgical care office, and they t- surgical care continued to tell me that there was no reason that I should have an MRI, and it was just a dumb idea, and that it's not going to show anything, and that they know what they're doing. But I still was not convinced of it. So I went in and I had this same surgeon drain it in the office. Let me tell you, not a comfortable thing to go through. And unfortunately, I was in a tough situation with my work schedule. So I couldn't just like, he told me, he was like, if you wait till the afternoon, I'll take you into surgery. I'll do it in surgery. I'll get a full blown exam of you completely put under and we can figure it out there because I clearly have no clue what's going on with you and that was very evident to me. He didn't even need to say that. Unfortunately, I didn't feel like with work I had the time or day to go into surgery and do that entire thing. So this guy lanced an abscess right next to my butthole, practically attached to it in his office and then packed my butt with gauze and told me to have a good day. Obviously he numbed it, but it was definitely not uncomfortable and I vowed to myself that if I ever had another one because I felt like this was not gonna go away at this point, I was gonna go into surgery. So he lanced this one, he hoped that once he lanced it, it it was never gonna come back because he surgically lanced it. But I had been on, he had given me originally antibiotics and they didn't take care of it. So he drained it. All was well. He still cut me on antibiotics, I think, just to like make sure that if there was an infection or whatever, it would be taken care of. Although when he did drain it, apparently there was a blood clot in it, which was very unusual. And he literally, as it like came out with a ghost, that's weird. I'm sorry, that's not something you ever want to hear a surgeon say when he's draining an abscess. And it freaked me out a little bit. And I don't know why there was a blood clot in there. Maybe because I'd had it for so long. I have no clue. But that also told me that there was blood involved, which makes me always nervous when it comes to, like, sepsis and that type of infection. So January rolls around. And it was either the second or third week. I want to say the third week of January. I got another one. I felt it coming on. I got the tailbone pain. I felt the bump starting. And at this point, the abscess grew to the size of a grape. So I called surgical Karen, and I went in on Tuesday, and I... Like, last time, had figured he was going to throw me into surgery that afternoon. But, unfortunately, he didn't have any openings. And I hadn't been COVID tested yet. So, he was like, I don't have any openings today, but I can take you into surgery tomorrow. And I was like, buddy, let's do it. 
because I'm not letting you lance me again and I need you him to do the full on exam. They do an external and an internal just a little bit up into your like rectum to make sure there's not like an abscess internally. And they, he, but he doesn't do that like in office. So I knew that I needed to go into surgery for this at this point. I'd bore them. They were all extremely uncomfortable and they were going to continue to happen. And I was tired of the happening. So he said, tomorrow, Wednesday, I can book some surgical time for you in the OR. Do you want to do it? I said, hell yeah, let's do it. And I went to surgery. Thank you guys for watching this video. Stay tuned for part two where I'm going to talk about my surgical experience and how things went wrong and anesthesiology didn't listen to me and that situation. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.